Dobrý večer. Já vás všechny vítám na prezentaci Ale Paula, který byl tak laskav, že přijel ne úplně kvůli nám z Argentíny, ale na cestě po Evropě jsme se domluvili, že se staví z Vídně, že si udělá malou odbočku do Prahy. Takže mám radost, že se akce, kterou plánujeme už několik měsíců, podařila k zdárnému konci. Vlaky neměly spoždění, přijeli na čas, počasí je krásný, takže všechno klaplo. Jsem rád, že se nám podařilo mezi, nebo do, na, mezi témata seminářů zase vrátit písmo, tentokrát písmo zejména skriptové a písmo reklamní do značné míry. Já jsem přednášku Ale Paula viděl v Berlíně a učarovala mi společně asi s tisíci diváků v tom obrovském sále, kde se koná konference Berlín, jsme nevěřícně sledovali plátno a projev Ale Paula a jeho práce nás učarovala, okouzlila nejen po stránce profesionality estetické, ale i po stránce profesionality technické, protože jeho písma jsou opravdu nesmírně komplikovaná a ukazují třeba, kam až se dá jít s formátem open type v dnešní době. Než předám slovo Ale Paulovi, jenom drobnou zmínku, můžete si tady koupit trička Unie grafického designu. Naše půvabná hosteska je prodává a můžete si u ní koupit i brožurky za 89 korun s přehledem prací některých členů Unie grafických kakého designu, kteří včas poslali Štěpánu Holičovi své práce, aby byly otištěny v té brožuře. Já vás tady všechny vítám a zejména tady vítám pana Ale Paula. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ale Paul. Hola. Uh, thank Philippe for the invitation. Uh, I am very happy that today is the last day I have to do something about typography, and tomorrow is holiday. So, uh, okay, I will show you some of my work and why I will tell you why and how I do that. Uh, my English is not very good. My check is zero, so I will I will I will talk about three niche uh, I found uh, by casuality, not by by a random way, not not because I propose to do that, but in 2002 I was fired for my graphic design job in Argentina because there was a big crisis like Europe has now. Uh, I used to design packaging. Every time I go to a country, I go to a supermarket. I still didn't went here, but uh, I, I usually do a research of what typeface are being used there because I think that today uh, is still one of the only ways we have to understand the culture of the different countries because in the supermarket, we found what we eat and we know who is buying what things, you know, it's it's like different social class are going there and picking the same kind of product, but different labels and different prices. So they manage different codes. But I discovered that in many countries in South America, the designers, graphic designers used to use the same fonts for big brands, small brands, uh, whatever. There was a point that I had like 1,000 image of packagings using that typeface that is called a textile. This is in Europe and Russia, uh, and I'm pretty sure if you go to the supermarket here, you will find a lot of them too. That is because it was a free font with the system in the Apple, in the Macintosh system. And so when I lost my job and I saw that connection between food for kids and food for animals using the same typography and <laughs> almost the same brand, well, you know, some people take care of the dogs like the kids, you know, or, or more. So, so maybe there is a link there. But I think graf a graphic designer should be very careful with the decisions that they take when they design for a client, right? So uh, I began to create a few typeface that, uh, to me, they fit in that idea of labels I, I had. Uh, so I. If, if I had to create a typeface for, I don't know, uh, a ricotta cheese, then 
uh, we designed that kind of uh, typeface that could be in a packaging. So I began to offer to, to in the web, uh, like I, 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 I said I create typeface for packaging. And that was not true. I, I, I say that, but people believe that, and then they began to call me that a designer of packaging fonts, whatever. So uh, everybody knows that there is a lot of organic uh, products and things, and people is trying to be healthy and fat. Uh, and so we created typeface for organic semantization, uh, whatever. Uh, and then I began to give some talks in South America trying to show what I was doing, but of course, South America is very, it, it, the relation, the link with the typography is very difficult uh, to adopt because nobody buy or nobody license typeface and nobody released that some people create typeface there. So uh, when they began to see that my typeface were used in the United States or in some places in Europe, the, after a few months or a few years, they, they began to, this is our samples, some samples of my typeface in use in, in different supermarkets of the world. Uh, when I began to show that in Argentina and in conference in Mexico or Peru or wherever, uh, they began to introduce that to our market. So now we have uh, a lot of, when you go to a supermarket in Argentina, it's all about the fonts that we create in Subtipo. That this is, it's kind of weird uh, because this is the way that designers work. It's like if they, what they see is what they want. Nobody has a new idea. So uh, one day I went to a, a supermarket to buy some cheese and for a party in my house. And I pick a cheese and I say, oh, this, it has one of my typeface. But then I pick another cheese from the same brand and it has another. And I pick 14 cheese and they have different 14 typeface from my collection and that so the first thing I, I say was wow I should take pictures the second one was nobody pay me for 14 fonts you know it's <laughs> like <laughs> what's what the fuck is happening here uh, so I I posted that in, on Facebook I have a Facebook page uh, where I show the fonts in use and Somebody, I ask if I ask, I ask it there if somebody knows who designed that. Obviously, there is a lot of spies in the Facebook, and they they want to be good friends, so they tell you who was. Uh, so I emailed the guy, and he was a young guy that he had a big client, and he told me I could not charge to the client your typeface. Uh, that is why I didn't buy it. So. What can I do? My reaction was to tell him that uh, you, you should change your way of work because you are doing bad. It's for me. <laughs> I am not busy, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I told him that if he wants to, to build a, 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 a work from graphic design, uh, he should take care of that things and maybe it's better for him to choose a good one typeface and create a brand and not to try to do a catalog of fonts because he thinks it's better. So, and so anyway, after that, he, he paid me some money. And that's <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when I began to, to do typography or typeface design, it was a hobby. I, I like it to experiment. And I especially, I like it to experiment with things that I could not do at the everyday work. And and this, I decided that I should study uh, what the teachers never taught me. Uh, education in South America is usually bas based in the Swiss school. Uh, so uh, people or, type or uh, teachers, they are used to call uh, script typeface fantasy. So and before you began a work, they, they used to tell you, you, you don't need to do, you, you should not use a, a script typeface because it's fantasy and it's not good and whatever. So uh, same history. Uh, so I decided that I should uh, study what nobody taught me. And then I began to take pictures from the streets and from the popular signs in any countries. Uh, I, I am lucky that I am, I, I am in, invited to talk in different 
city, so I can get more and more and more information about that. And I discovered that this kind of lettering was uh, very common in not only uh, poor people, uh, poor poor cities or or uh, small cities where there were not graphic designers or whatever. Some of these images are in United States, some of them are in Chile, some are in Argentina, whatever, in Mexico. And you can see a connection around all of them. And nobody tell me about that n ever. So the first time I, uh, uh, the first typeface I, I made doing that was this called ministry that it was kind of many alternate things. This is the only time I will show some open type things. Uh, this is the last typeface I create. This is very funny because uh, it's very hard to, to, to sell a typeface. Uh, so every time I publish a new typeface, I try to make a collaboration with some people from different fields, not graphic design, some photographers, some illustrators, some musicians, some whatever. Uh, this is another experiment about trying to emulate the handwriting of the 30s in the uh, cosmetics and fashion magazine from the 30s. So when I, when I promote this typeface, I, I made a lot of images, but this is one that I, I wanted to show how it good it could fit there. And it's interesting how, because I show it with Gumens, it ended being used in a lot of Gumen things. Uh, like this. This is a new girl, right? <laughs> or this. Uh, or this. Different kind of Gumens. <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> and this is Facebook that. Facebook, I don't know, it was like six months ago or whatever, whatever, they were celebrating 500 million users and now they have like 900. And it's interesting that uh, I met the, the, the director of Facebook, uh, the, the, the designer director, and it's interesting how they uh, made a hand lettering based on the digital typeface I made. It's It's... Anyway, he said they bought, they bought the license, whatever. They could call me and pay me. So one of the first things I saw was this kind of business penmanship that it was used to begin to write in business when, when, you, were a bus when, you, were, when you used to be a business person. And what, I, I, what the first thing that came to my mind was that illustrator guy that is another Argentinian guy that is called Leandro Castellao, that is a very friend of mine, and he only works with lines and figures, you know? And he creates very, very, very amazing stuff. So before beginning the, the typeface idea I had, uh, I contacted him and he, we decided to work together in that idea. So when I was doing the font, he was doing some images to create a PDF material. So the idea was to create a very monoline and thin typeface, the, the thinner type monoline calligraphy in the market, whatever. So we create that, I create that typeface and he creates some material that is very hard to show here because it's very thin, but you can download it in the, my website. Uh, I think it works very well with, with, the, with the typeface. Anyway, uh, I create some collateral material for another uh, social media, this is, th that was from Behance. I understood that the social medias has, have different kind of people in each of them, so it's not the same, you communicate something in Twitter and some people communicate things in Twitter and they reproduce in Facebook or in Behance or in Flickr or everywhere the same thing and the publics and, and the users are very different. So I try to focus in each social media in the different kind of persons. So the idea was to show how it could work in fashion magazines or whatever, uh, the, how, how could be combined with photographies or, and it still works. Anyway, a new niche appeared to me and now the trendy letterpress thing, uh, it's full of my typeface. Every day I go, uh, now I, I, I don't read blogs about design, I read the blogs about letterpress and stationery and flowers. <laughs> trying to find that kind of things and people send me, it's very funny. 
And this is an Italian calligraphy. You can see how complex is the, the uppercase. Uh, that was impossible to do in metal, and especially was impossible because you cannot combine the lowercase at the right, whatever. But now with OpenType, I thought that it was possible to do that. So I decide, this is an Italian typeface in metal that you can see that the left part in some point works, but they don't have the right part. And was not very, they, they didn't have many ligatures only f by some a small ligature for some parts. So I found interesting to make some kind of recreation of that, mixing the American calligraphy with the English calligraphy from 100 years before the other one. So mixing that two fonts, that, that two font, no, that two calligraphy styles, I created a font called Poem that I made it specifically to, cap to, capture, it, to, to capture some letterpress and uh, wedding planners and all that people. So I create that video to promote it, to make some viral thing, you know. And I work with a guy that he's very good and he won some canned things and he was very happy to work on that and we show it in some festivals with shorts, nothing, com nothing about typography, right? But was interesting. Sometimes with very small resource, you can do things that can help you to communicate a lot. Was very hard to find the music because nobody want me wants to give me the music. They wanted to charge me a lot. So finally, a French com a French pianist gave me the track. So we create some synergy uh, between a musician, a filmmaker, and a typographer. Not every wedding planner and stationary old girl looks videos in YouTube, so or not that kind of video. So I decided to create and send some material, uh, some uh, love history, a photo novel about a, a wedding day. And to do that, I work with a Chilean guy that take pictures of wedding of, of weddings. He's a graphic designer, but he's a kind of alternative photographer uh, in the weddings, you know, when you want to have a wedding that diff is different. It's happened a lot now. So I create that a small history that is a basic uh, wedding day. I had problems in the in United States with that image because it it's, uh, you know, a, a, a bride should not smoke. Uh, the friends, the father. So it was made to show how this could work in that kind of uh, environment. The DJ. Anyway, it was funny to make that to make that too. These are more Victorian uh, cups, uh, and it's interesting to the use of the nature uh, for some of that typeface, uh, the, the use of the natural ornaments. So when I saw that, and I was, I, I don't know, drinking or whatever in my house, uh, and the idea when I saw that was, uh, the I, I machined the wall like a paper and the plant like ink. So it was a small, stupid concept, but I created a typeface called Affair, that the idea is that the typeface is growing in the wo in the paper. So when you type, it's made some weird ligatures, like ligate the first letter with the four and the second with the five, fifth. It's kind of mixed. Obviously, it's all coded in the behind, but when you type it, it's do 
automatically, so you have no control of that. You have, if, if you know how to use it, you have control, but I, I, I like the effect it creates. So that's the way it was shown. It's interesting. That's a part of the font inside where you have the ligatures that made all the crazy stuff. These are some images I create to communicate it. Uh, and the last thing I want to talk is about another niche that I, I it appears to me because I, I, when I didn't expect, and it's the body. The body, uh, the a lot of people is very tattooed that time, uh, and well, always people get tattooed, but uh, now is it much than ever. And the, the, the skin is like a paper. And the difference is that the printer is not a machine, it's a human. So there is a lot of, uh, uh, could be a lot of problems when the human interacts with the skin. And the skins are not all the same. But the problems are the graphic designers. That was an image that I received with Ministry Script. And when I saw that, I, I said, I will never do a typeface again because it was so ugly. And I felt so bad because he will not remove it. He will not reprint it. He will not. And that I don't know why he made this, because you, can, you, you need to do it bad to, to, to have this result. And this is another guy that sent me ministry script. And the problem is, see how tired the printer become at the end. Yeah, it's like the guy, OK, I'm tired to write. Um, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Uh, so I began to receive some emails about people asking me if I, uh, that this is a guy that one of the kids, he had twins, one dead, one not. Uh, so I don't know, he was, he, he sent me a thank you because I created a typeface that fits with his poor son, whatever. It's very, a lot of uh, emotions, no? It, it's it's kind of too much for a typeface. Uh, and this is another musician that sent me a fair with microphones and things. <laughs> and this is another that just copy the typeface by hand and create something weird. Oh, ugly. And this is very crazy because the first one is a girl that sent me an email and she told me I, ta I screen capture, I, I make a capture of your screen, your website, and I uh, tattoo your, the name of your phone in my arm. <laughs> and the second one is one that put push on all the alternates and things and it's ugly. This is nice. <laughs> I don't know wh why I put that, but it's nice. It's in Sherman. Uh, oh, it, it was a tequila campaign where all the promote promotion girls were tattooed with a fur. But this is interesting because it's Lady Renee with, in a, in, with a girl that sent that image with a sheen that is kind of similar ornament. It's, it's weird. Uh, another one. Uh, another one. So when I got that book that used that that has. Burgess in a tattoo in the cover, amongst other letterings, I decided that it was time to create a typeface for tattoo by myself. Uh, so I began to study what is happening and what people tattoo. That's amazing. The, the Helvetica is very. Uh, but I decided that what I like more is that kind of art that of course, was never shown to me in the school. That is the Chicano style or the Cholo Mexican style, whatever, that people from the shale make themselves or some artists from there make for them. And now it's very popular in Los Angeles and that kind of people. But what I like from this is how they use the ornaments and how you still read the typeface. And they are not graphic designers. They are a different feel that use typeface. Uh, so I made a research, very complex things. This is impossible to do. So I create PL script. PL script is, PL means skin. Uh, I try to show, I, I, the, I, I work with some kids to do the images, some kids that does fashion design. Uh, they, they design textile for, for brands, whatever. 
and they create some urban situations with the font to try to generate a, a kind of a idea of the style we are looking for or whatever with that font. So very obviously situations. Every word that was used in the PDF was uh, after making a research of what are the most tattooed words in the world, you know, Madre is one of them, Lucky is another, Carpe Diem. Uh, so you can create all that complex stuff. And it was funny because uh, last year in the, or this year, I don't know when it was letter to this year or last year, in a type competition, it was selected like one of the typefaces. I never expect that, especially, but maybe it's because type design is so structured that it fits like a different thing there. So you can create that complex ornament. And the idea of the typeface is that you can, you have a K, a, a K or you have an H or you have any ascender and you have ornaments that you, that works in the upper part of the letter or you have ornaments that work in the lower part of the letter or you have ornaments that work at the beginning or the end uh, by position. So you can create that things. <laughs> that is the girl that was very uh, great, great. She told she told me that she's very, she wants to be great, great uh, to say thank you or whatever. And so she tattooed gratitude. And she sent me the process. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, this is another one that sent me the process. Respect. That was one of the words I, I, I created for the PDF. Yeah, I think it looks nice. <laughs> More beer. <laughs> More beer. This is what happened when you tattoo that typeface. <laughs> this is another. I create that one for this guy. And as the other day, I was looking the lo Los Logos book, and it was there. It's crazy. That is what I never expect from. This is Matthew Carter, and this is Ed Ben Gyat, and this is my face of happiness. Uh, I never expect to be with that people and and be able to talk about something and you know it's it's like I, I was a plain I, I was very sad when I lost my graphic design job and I, I didn't imagine a future in t in type design and in sh so short time. Uh, this is Creative Review magazine that chose two PL script like display face of the year and some awards, and this is Hipster that won a TDC this year. Um, so uh, this is all gratitude I have. I, 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 this is the I Magazine that is the first time that they make a Latin typographer article and they made eight pages, you know, the price of eight pages. In I, I, I <laughs> I'm so surprised. And, and it's, it's very, I don't know. Uh, I only say thanks for, to do for that, right? It's, and this is computer art that say that is, uh, one of the 200 things that happened in graphic design in the last 20 years was subtypos with the script fonts that they re re bring again the, this style to the, to the market. Um, and this is to be finishing, this is what I really think about that Swiss teachers I used to have and the people that used to call fantasy typeface to the scripts when I used to uh, study. Uh, I don't care what people really say uh, about my work. Uh, I do that because it's my living. And thank you. <laughs> this is my...